come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You come are too you. awake. That's right. <laughs> Very enthusiastic uh, podcast uh, for this week. Uh, so, hey, do us a favor. Wherever you found us, hit that like or subscribe button because, man, we uh, we need the help <laughs> to become the fastest growing internet radio podcast yeah. in the galaxy. All Messed right. that all up. Yep. But these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight, we watched a movie. A movie that was chosen by. Holly. Mm. Holly, what we watch tonight? Mm. Where'd you take us? Okay, so we went to Atlantis. Ooh, we did. Did we? We really went to Miami, Florida. It feels like it. <laughs> but kind of the Philippines. So we watched <laughs> Raiders of Atlantis slash Atlantis Interceptors slash Predators of Atlantis. Oh. You oh. Didn't, couldn't, you... couldn't settle on a title there, huh? Well. Except Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. Atlantis is the, the key point there. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, from the year. Yeah, 1983. And directed by. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Directed by. Rogero Deodoto. Yep. The guy uh, who directed Cannibal Holocaust? Yes, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh. That adds a new okay. wrinkle to this movie. Right? I know. Did you see any resemblances to between this uh, <laughs> the style of this movie and Cannibal Holocaust? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, when I'm watching <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust, cinematic style is not really what I'm noticing. Yeah, yeah. I'm and movie, I, haven't, so. I haven't actively yeah. decided to watch that movie in yeah. a long time. So. Yeah, so yeah. I have actively decided to never watch that movie <laughs> until it came to the Saturday Night Freak Show. No, okay. <laughs> um, have you never seen it? I refuse to watch it because I know what happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they have a version now where you can edit out the animal murder. Like it edits it out for you. I mean, well, it takes it off my still, list. Like, yeah, it's still way too. Yeah, um, there's still a lot of other stuff. I was like, yeah, that's the biggest order. stuff, but <laughs> the rest, I'm not too stoked yeah. about either. Yeah. Well, he also made um, the uh, Last House on the Left ripoff sequel. What it was a ripoff? What was it called? Mm-hmm. House on the Edge of the Park. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Which had. Um, Anybody good in it? Uh well it had uh, um um David Hess from uh wasn't yeah David Hess is in it and he was What's, in uh, was um uh, Last House on the Left yeah the oh, original one okay. and Swamp Thing which yep. we did on the right show. okay um <clears throat> and then I think like there was a whole thing like Rogero Diodato I think because of Cannibal Holocaust um there were uh, lawsuits filed against him yes basically yeah. because they thought that he had either killed members of his cast or killed extras or actually right. killed people in making right. Cannibal Holocaust they had to bring them into court to testify that yeah. no I'm all alive they were, they were under and- contract that they had to like go into hiding. Yeah. Oh, were they? Now, was it, yeah. Was it the main actors, or was it like that he had killed extras or something? I think it like, was extra. But yeah. there was whoever I can't remember who it was because once again, it's been a long time since I willingly yeah. watched it. Um, the woman that was impaled on the spike was someone that he had right. to bring into court, and mm-hmm. he had to actually show how he did it. And they had like a bicycle seat oh, that yeah. she sat on, and like a thing that she would put in her mouth that kind of expanded her throat to make it look like the post was going through her. Mm-hmm. So that was like a thing he had to reveal how he did it. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, the notoriety of that movie followed him around throughout most of his career. Then yeah. he couldn't like you know do mm-hmm. certain movies. I guess that he wanted to do or whatever. And so then he took jobs uh, directing. I guess they're like assignment work, right? This kind of feels like uh, not something. I don't know. He later Who he produced didn't... this movie. I have no idea. Oh, Italian. <laughs> the Italian. Well, definitely like, the Italian. I was like, it's Italian. I can okay. tell you that. <laughs> Which surprised the hell out of me that uh, it uh, Holly's picking Italian. Well, you've done it before. Night yeah. Killer. And, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, and he also did a movie called Cut and Run. I remember had Michael Berryman in it. That was like mid 80s. I don't mm-hmm. know if he's done anything since. He showed up in uh, uh-huh. Hostel 2. He did. Right? As... Uh, because Eli Roth is a big fan of Cannibal yep. Holocaust mm-hmm. and made the Green Inferno. Yeah. Um, so as we said, it's an Italian movie. Uh, the Italians, of course, if you've been listening to our show, because we try to ma- watch as many Italian movies as we can, because <laughs> there's a special thing going on with Italian movies of the 70s and 80s. Yeah. They just, they hit different. They do. Indeed. Because yeah. uh, you have... Uh, is this a ripoff of anything? I'm just going to... 
Well, you tell me what 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 you see in this. <laughs> what, Eighty-three, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, Road Warrior. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to remember the beginning of this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because there were a lot of punks, street yeah. punks. Right. It's like Mad Max was a big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Mad Max a seems like a very big one. Yeah. yeah. Escape yes. from New York. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Rambo. I don't mm-hmm. even know if Rambo was in, in 83. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because they did the Italians were famously like ripoff artists. Yeah, right? sure. They would capitalize on something that came out, you know, somewhere else in the world that was like a big, you know, because obviously Raiders of Atlantis, right? So yeah, borrowing from Raiders of the Lost Ark, mm-hmm. uh, they would just borrow and then they yeah mm-hmm. they mine that uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know because there, there was a whole bunch there you know the 1990 Bronx Warriors and what were we watching. Rome, 1972, the new Gladiator, yeah. Yeah. Strike Commando, and stuff TC like that. So, yeah, that's not uh, an Italian one, but <laughs> it um, looked like it. It did look like it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, and I, what I understood, I think we, you know, like the Italians, uh, they had like a, a before TV really, um, kind of ruined it. Their film industry was like was like their TV. Like you had to have something new in the in the movies. Every week, oh. and so they were just cranking them out like is this, crazy. Is this is why they just kept t- grabbing stuff and be like, "We'll just yeah, cut it up they and had rename to have, it and put it out there." Yeah, had to have something in in cinemas because everybody, you know, uh, lived uh, uh, an outdoor kind of life and mm. would go to the cinemas at night. You know, they go out to eat, and go to the. At least this is according to Eurocrime, a great documentary <laughs> uh, on Italian um, police uh, thrillers. Oh yeah. Um, okay, so who's in this movie? What? There's Italian po- the Polichetti. Polish Polichetti. On- <laughs> it, it's true. I, I there's G- Giallo. Just- is the, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Euro crime. <laughs> yeah, Euro crime. <laughs> I just can't believe like that. There's a documentary on that very specific niche. Oh yeah, oh, like, this documentary. Because really, yeah, then they That's ran it. They, like the me. mob is from there, and they're like they're filming like uh, shootings in the street. Then like over, there'd be a shooting in the next street. <laughs> <laughs> They, <laughs> the mob was like controlling film sets. Oh yeah, is a thing. Who's in this movie? Oh, um, Christopher Conley, who you would recognize from. You tell me, Colin. Well, let's ask Sean. <laughs> Which one was Christopher Conley? The main, the main, Mike. main guy. <laughs> what is uh, he? L- Commando. <laughs> <laughs> From Bruno Mattei. Uh, ah, he's also I know a, Bruno Mattei. Wait, do you know what he's uh, famous from? Uh. Uh-uh. Peyton Place. He looks oh. familiar. Ah. He looks so familiar. Yeah. I've seen him in something else before because he's. But he also has that kind of uh, uh, Roberts. What's his name? Um, Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts look a little bit. He does yeah. kinda, yeah. A little bit. That smarmy look. Yeah. yeah. But he's your uh, kind of you know because he, uh, he's the your Hannibal would do right. They would take like a star kind of somebody who was famous in the past and on their way down like come to Rome. <laughs> On their way down. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. If we've learned anything from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> you go to Rome. Um, who else is in this? Um, Co-starring. Tony King. Who's he? Muhammad. The narrator of this movie, Colin. The narrator of this He's movie. He's the narrator of this movie. I mean, Why is he the narrator of this movie? Because, because for some reason. <laughs> we had a very interesting viewing experience with this for movie. For many reasons That is tonight. inexplicable to us still. Yeah, I don't know if this was, what Did we rent this yeah. on, on this Amazon? Amazon. We paid Prime. for that. We paid for this on Amazon, and in the background this of this. the only option on Prime. Like, the only. We tried it in stereo and, there, and mono. There is uh, half of a... Uh, commentary with King on this that we just hear you, we, low parts of his side of the conversation. Like, in some parts, it's really muffled and so low that you can't really hear it past the dialogue of the characters. Yes. But then there are points when it gets really loud and prominent and you know exactly what he's saying. But you again, we only hear his side of the conversation. For, and this starts from the first frame of the from movie. The get-go. Because yeah. we the first thing we see is like two men running some rope on a beach and we hear in the background well, I'm a nice guy. You're a nice guy. I think we'd get along. Yeah. And, but neither of these characters are talking. Right. So we're like, what the... Like, the dubbing is, is really right. bad. Right. Yeah. We're like, this, what the fuck? At this point, we're like, well, it's Italian. We, we just assume <laughs> yeah. the dubbing's really right. bad. dubbing, yeah. We gave it some leeway. <laughs> but the more it out, went on, we're like, wait a second. No. Because then he's talking about stunts. I'm like, wait. Right. And <laughs> yeah. I, I looked up the special features to make sure there is a commentary with him on it. There is? Okay, oh, so yeah. we so have confirmed. Is, it's okay. an official commentary. We don't hear whoever he's talking to 
because he's talking to someone who's asking him questions as the movie mm-hmm. goes on. We never hear them. Just his input throughout the movie. Which is not very enlightening. No. Shocking to say, I know. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> he had a good time. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, we got didn't get paid a lot. We had a good time. He repeats those things a lot. Yeah. 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 And we hear him say, yeah, a lot. Yeah. 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 And laugh. He, he chuckle laughs a little for he no like reason. He has a giggle. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of well, this, I guess, is another uh, reason why uh, physical media is superior to the right. streaming. Uh, that's right. We're... Um, but yeah, Tony King, as far as I understand, he was in the NFL, right? He was a football player. I'm not sure for what team, but later um, in He life, probably said it on the commentary. Yeah, because he, he went on that whole thing about his whole family is yeah. professional athletes. Yeah. He went on a whole football. tangent about that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what he didn't say here is that at some point later in life, after he gave up acting, he became personal bodyguard for Public Enemy. Oh, shit. Oh, nice. Nice. There you go. Sounds like a probably dangerous game, yeah. actually, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and now he does commentary tracks, which we hear parts of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, when Sean was saying half a com- yeah, it's 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 not like half the commentary. It's no. just like one channel audio right. of a commentary conversation. It got left on when it was somehow when they mixed gave it to Amazon, that, yeah, and yeah. it was like we're here. And Amazon was like, "It's Italian. Well, the dubbing's they bad." They didn't quality check. No, this. you're right. No. They just threw it up. They're like, "No one's gonna watch this." It's <laughs> yeah. It's just out of context, like non sequiturs of like yeah we yeah. all liked each other we got along good yeah, yeah. we didn't get paid very much yeah, yeah. that and then day so- was crazy like that yes yeah. out of context we're not hearing the setup for any of these answers no. at all and well, then, at, yeah. at one point when something just made no sense he's like we did a lot of ad libbing in this yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a very so this is a limited time offer probably that you're hearing right now uh, because uh, who knows how quickly they'll fix this Colin yeah. right yeah. into Amazon and tell them <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and then uh, demand a refund because we watched. Yeah, the whole yeah thing we that paid way. for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I demand I, Blu-rays all around. Yeah, because it did. It was kind of difficult to like. Kind of, you had to tune in. Like, oh, I'm, I'm listening yeah. to the audio track of the movie or this guy talking. Or yeah, because then sometimes strange. it would turn into that situation where you're you're talking, everybody else is talking, and then it drops to dead silence, and then you say something stupid or embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> but he only talked when other people were talking. He never yeah. talked in yeah. the silent no. spaces yeah. of the movie. I'm assuming the interviewer was probably talking who knows yeah. you'll have to buy the was it synapse or severin somebody put out a, sure. a nice new blu-ray of oh. raiders of atlantis uh aka atlantis interceptors. interceptors um i also noticed uh, by being an italian film watcher i saw uh george hilton mm-hmm. and uh, ivan rasimov mm-hmm. uh who are frequently in a lot of giallo movies in usually with uh edvige fennec uh, oh. Such as all the colors of the dark and uh, the strange vice of Mrs. Ward. Uh, both what is Mrs. Ward's strange vice? <laughs> gotta watch it and find out. Bring it, Sean. Bring it. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is a cool. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and also in this, uh, because we're. I don't. Have we put uh, Michele Suave on the Saturday Night Freak Show? We have to. He has because to, Because right? he yeah. directed Cemetery Man. He yep. Later he directed Cemetery Man, which we did on this show. Yeah. Um, he was also in Demons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, there was another film that we watched fairly recently. Yeah, I think it was uh, a recent It wasn't one, was opera, it. was it? Oh, it might have been opera. I think it was opera, yeah. It may yeah. have had like a bit part in opera yeah. or something like that. But he was an actor who became an assistant to Dario it Argento, was opera. Mm-hmm. Yes. and then eventually directed... Uh, now, it seems like the thing he's most known for is he directed a movie called Stage Fright, which is a, an Italian slasher movie. Stay tuned uh, for that. It's been yeah. on my list for a long time. Guy wears an owl head. Yep. Oh, is that yep. that one? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So everybody's like, oh, yeah! yeah. Stage Fright, right. Um, okay, so uh, here we are in the year 1983. That's not true, is it? 1994. Again. Uh, uh, turning into a magic year. Yeah. <laughs> because Bim, Bim yeah. loved 1994. Yeah. And so we love 1994. Do you think Atlantis is where Mr. Tops took everybody at the end? I oh, was going to say God. something yeah. about the dome closing and Mr. Tops driving <laughs> his gold Sky Cadillac in, yeah. but who knows? The extended universe. Yeah. Yeah. The Apple from, yes. extended universe. Yep. Yeah. Oh, God. They drove that Sky Cadillac into Atlantis. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. that's how it kind of, yeah. 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 So the Raiders are actually the hippies that Mr. Tops gathered. Well, where did they go oh, wrong? Well, Jesus. I, no, I can't. I can't <laughs> no, I don't believe the hippies would turn no, to this much violence. No, they were a peaceful people. <laughs> we know this. Those were, they were those happy were, living in a cave. Yes. Yeah, those we were this. stoners living in a cave. Yes. <laughs> 
Well, this the one's Raiders good. were grumpy. <laughs> so, because we were going like, they're more like the Raiders Rufio. of Atlantis. Yeah. You know, because initially I'm like, okay, this is going to be about fortune hunters who are seeking the yeah. city of Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Not stumbling on it accidentally. Yeah, but this is not the case. The Raiders of Atlantis, they're like the Raiders from Atlantis. They're, yeah. Yeah. They're the Raiders yeah. from Atlantis. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. But they call themselves the Interceptors, which the inter- is why the, the Atlantis And if you look for, and for Dear Brailers, if you look for this movie on Prime, you're going to look up Atlantis Interceptors. That's what it's under. Well, the one we watched. Yeah. But the, the if you want the one with the commentary track, it's Raiders from Atlantis. On, yeah. On Prime. Was it? Yeah. That mm-hmm. one. The other one was like on Tubi oh, it was or on something. Tubi. Like that. That's yeah. right. You're right. But Good luck, that, listener. But maybe that doesn't have the commentary <laughs> track. Maybe so not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it, someone watch it on Tubi at least for like quality, ten minutes and let us know. Better yeah. audio. Um, if, if you don't hear, <laughs> I'm a nice guy. You're a nice guy. We get along great. <laughs> yeah. At the beginning of the movie, then you're you're in the clear. It's oh. right around when he throws the grappling hook. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, tell us about the beginning of this movie. Who are we introduced to? And what do they do? So we're not really introduced to anyone. No, not Things really. Things just kind of start happening. <laughs> um, right out of the gate, yeah, though. I mean, this we, is a this is a good way to start your movie. We Action. literally see like a couple like thug looking guys, um, who are like on the lookout on like some beach somewhere, and they're like, "Oh, nothing's happening. Nothing ever really happens around here." And then cut to <laughs> <laughs> something happening. <laughs> I'm surprised they weren't throwing a frisbee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mike and Muhammad who creeping up on this mansion, ready to to strike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is uh, well, there was a joke at the beginning or whatever because everybody calls he's Tony King's Washington. character Washington. Yeah. Wash, yeah. Wash. And he's like, I'm not Washington. I'm Muhammad. Mm-hmm. And, and he spells it. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's really funny. Yeah, You're right. From a lot. <laughs> they, they do. Yeah. Um, Until it's apparently dropped. he's just recently like converted to Islam or it something. Seems like, like it. Yes. Nobody is aware of this really. Right. Yet. Uh, and Mike, the other guy, and mm-hmm. so they are. Correct me if I'm wrong. Soldiers of Fortune, yes, who are stealing. They're going. They're breaking. I mean, it's like it's like a drug lord's house somewhere, and they're going in with zip lines and all this shit, yeah. taking guys out. And they kill this one guy, or they knock him out, put him in a body bag, and zip line him down to the beach. Uh, we're like, yeah. Oh, action and adventure! And we're like, okay, but okay, then you gonna put that aside for a little bit because yeah. now we're gonna settle into. Uh, building our uh, a plot, which involves a team of scientists <laughs> who work on an oil rig, mm-hmm. yes, and they are trying to raise a submarine off the ocean floor. Yeah. I think, but I'm not positive because the woman whose name was Kathy, yep. Kathy, uh, she has been brought uh, been brought there. Yes, uh, to uh, decode a hieroglyph or whatever. It's right. a it's like right. a, she's got a tablet. Right. It looks while like they, a stone tablet. Uh, yes. While they were going down and uh, hooking up the, the submarine to bring it up, they find artifacts, okay. specifically this tablet. So she's going to decode it. Yeah, because it's, what, 12,000 years old? Right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, this is our first clue. Now, yeah. it looks Aztec or something because a lot of the uh, um, reference materials that she's pulling up are Aztec yeah. ritual masks and stuff like that. Um, and so what does she discover? That it could be the key to the lost city of Atlantis. Okay, well there you go. I mean, that's it. And this becomes just as fact, like later on, like as soon as she kind of like she's like, it could be this, and then for us the movie, that's what it is. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. That is it's absolutely what it is. Okay. Now, did I don't think there was ever a moment that they established that she's like an Atlantis expert. No. She's not like a, a historian that's like an expert on Atlantis. Not a, no. I don't think anybody's an expert on Atlantis because it seems we stumble into Atlantis. In this movie. Right. So, no, she's so more... she decodes that pretty damn quick. Yeah. Well, she may be... Um, That's her. I don't know if it's Atlantean, but I don't even know if that means anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> to tell you the truth. But uh, whatever the language is, she can decode. I think that's she her said, specialty. It just happens to She be. made a comment about, like, having a degree in pre-Columbian language or something right, like okay. that when right. they were walking okay. down and the I, stairs. Yeah, and I think, yeah, and yep. I think that's it. History okay. major. The Atlantis of it all surprised everyone. Okay, yeah. so I have. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna throw a scene out there that I remember. Okay. Um, okay. That I don't remember the context around it. Probably the best way know. to approach this movie. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. No, there I is think we a scene. Go with it. Yeah. Where a I I believe a man dressed in a suit uh, goes into an office building. Yes. And uh, was it in a safe? It was in a safe. He opens a safe. Yeah. He cracks the safe or whatever because he uses some kind of tool, and in the safe is a 
a crystal skull. A mask. <laughs> a crystal uh, mask. mask. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he takes that mask. And mm-hmm. later we see that this mask is worn by the leader of the uh, Mad Max Interceptor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Atlantean. He's a Morton Atlantean. Joe. Yeah. What the hell was going on there? <laughs> Who sure. was that guy? Where did the mask come from? How did he know it was there? Yeah. Is the mask powerful? Those are, those are, you know, those are all great questions. <laughs> I wish I had answers <laughs> really for good you. questions, Scott. Okay. All right. I'm just making sure because I don't know the answer to okay. these. I'm just throwing it out there to see if anyone picked up on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. What yeah, do I we know about? Because I remember right. that scene right, and right. just being like, uh, I'm glad you remember it because I <laughs> do not. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. When that guy yeah. showed up later on with that, I was like, ooh, a new character. <laughs> <laughs> well, the was sub- that the same guy that wore I don't know, the mask? The first guy. <laughs> like. Do we? Do we? Do assume, we think does the guy? mask have magical powers? Uh, Keeps the dude alive, it would seem. It gets crushed and he dies. I mean, when, yeah. he, when it crushes, the door opens, so. Oh, I mean, there is that. Yeah. The door to the Atlantean temple. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. We're yeah, we'll get okay. there. We're yes. talking a lot yeah, about Atlantis. You're, you're, we're setting expectations up. There it's is no the title. Yeah. So There's okay. a hatch and a door. <laughs> oh, yeah. Two hatches, I guess. <laughs> a hatch and yeah. then double hatches. Yeah. That's yeah. in the submarine. Oh, okay. Is it? That's in the submarine. Right. Yeah, but isn't that how they get to where the door is? I don't know. I, I, mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I think so. Because yeah. it might have been him trying to disarm the nukes. So yeah. they raise the submarine right. halfway up, and all of a sudden, right. there's a power explosion. Right. The and radiation, a giant... The radiation from the submarine activates Atlantis, I guess. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. It's, like, it, they, it's like this movie's equivalent of like when you pull that book out of the bookshelf, and it flips the door around. That's and the yeah, 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 yeah. Like yep. Lifting the submarine. Yeah, opened the secret door yes. to Atlantis because yeah. it's been just down there. It's their hide key. This time. <laughs> oh, I think they said there's something about the nukes on board. It's the radiation. The radiation. Yeah, yeah, the radiation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So just like it, uh, nukes uh, release Godzilla. Yep. They also yeah. release Atlantis. Un- released Atlantis. But so the Atlanteans are on a mission. Apparently, but this this is now we're we're telling you, listener, like all this stuff right up because we have done the work. We have watched the entire movie. <laughs> right, you we, will probably be perplexed at this yes. point in the movie, going like, "Wait, what the fuck?" Because you are shown things out of context. Like, okay, well, I get it. They're they're raising the sub. Mm-hmm. I did not make the connection that the sub had uh, any kind of uh, uh, impact on what was happening. But all of a sudden, as they're raising it, there's a giant tidal wave. Yep. Uh, right. Which destroys the oil rig, and it's yes. seen by a guy. Now we have seen street scenes in Miami Beach. I think that's actually where the guy uh, who stole the mask was in Miami, and that's why okay. I remember oh, that's seeing, why we keep the seeing Miami. Miami. Oh, right. right? Yes, we were in Miami. So <laughs> during the sequence of the tidal wave, we cut to a gentleman and his wife outside their house on a street. And he comes out and he looks and the sky goes dark in the distance and there's a tidal wave and he's like, what? And then all of a sudden his wife is shot in the neck by a dart and bleeds profusely because it's an Italian movie and we're going to do some kind of gory, uh, you know, like blood effects every single time somebody gets killed. Because it's Ruggiero. (laughs) And he turns around and he's like, oh no, my wife. And we see the Atlantean interceptors. But okay. we don't know that because all we're seeing is now it's all of a sudden the movie's turned into the road warrior. Gutter punks. Yeah. yeah. They got makeup and leather and motorcycles and, and all chains that stuff. and hair, colored hair, face paint. Sure. Okay. Bunch of stuff. I okay. <laughs> Theories are coming. Okay. I like to think because at one point they say that the Atlanteans are back to reclaim what's theirs, right? Like, they're the rightful people. <laughs> Miami. Of, of uh, Miami. Yeah, yes, sure. sure. And Who knew Miami, uh, Florida was part of Atlantis but, before I, it all yeah. broke off? It's a party culture. But Did I you see don't them? Think, you know? I don't think that is Miami. I think that's the no, island yes, that we end yes, up in for there, most of the yes, movie. Yes, But the mask is in Miami, and there is a moment where someone says they invaded Miami Beach first. Mm. So I think that the mask does have powers, and at some point that was one of the artifacts that was found. Some rich person is holding it in their safe because rich people like expensive things, yes. and they're back to claim the mask as part of their invasion. It calls out to them. It calls out and to them like a siren call. There. there we go. So he, they invaded Miami to get the mask back, and now they're going to the island. I love this. Okay, Boom. all of a sudden the movie's starting. Yeah. It's making absolute perfect sense. Where were perfect you four sense. hours ago? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so then now that our uh, oil rig, right? By the way, station, this is like the cheap version of the abyss, right? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> right, I mean, it's cheap the cheap version what, of a lot of stuff. <laughs> you're saying like, well, we see stock footage of uh, a tidal wave coming, and then there's the little model. Which yes. I love uh, yes. these Italian movie yeah. models that they're still doing this in the 80s, and then but the it looks land just rises like from the ocean floor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what was okay? So <laughs> yeah, the, right. Because did that happen? Well, first of all, they're rescued because all of a sudden our fortune hunters, Mike and Washington, sure, Muhammad, Muhammad, <laughs> and uh, also um, uh, Nor- Noriega. I can't remember. Miguel? Miguel, there you go, sorry. <laughs> he shows up, uh, and they've got, like, a third guy. There are characters who just kind of come and go throughout yeah. this Yeah, there's maybe. a German dude who shows up for, like, 20 minutes, and then he goes <laughs> and away then, again. And oh. when he shows up, very confused by that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because yeah. I thought he was one of the... We thought he was an He was confused. I was confused. This is what he sounds he like in this movie. Right. He's very yeah. German. All confused. Yeah. And he, like, so this guy shows up, looks like a punk, is attacking Mike. They get into mm. a death death struggle. But a lot of death struggles. There's all of a sudden, uh, like, a, a uh, envelope full of cash on the floor. What? This is the weirdest thing. And I'm right. like, who dropped the money? Right. Did the, the German money? or did Mike drop the Whose money is it? It's supposedly Mike's. Is it? The German, I think the German says you dropped your money. So, but no, he, well, he no, says something. No, he says something like, like mortal man obsessed with money or something uh, like that. So yeah. the way I read that was that the German has been alive, hanging out on this island trying to survive. That's what I got. And yeah. he recognizes because Mike wants money, uh, he's, he's a mortal person. Yeah. Gotcha. But then because, he, because then Mike looks at his wrist and sees a broken handcuff. And he's like, nice bracelet. Because he knows that at some point he was yeah. taken captive yeah so he's like okay you're cool yeah come back to the the party with us yeah um but the the atlanteans get killed all over the place like they're not immortal they get shot they're dead and whatever okay yep let's back up yeah so there's a yacht yeah (laughs) they so they rescue because uh our fortune hunters uh they have this this yacht and they pick up the remainder of the crew right after the rig goes down and then yeah. they see, I think, the giant bubble um, appear from the depths of the ocean. Mm. And the bubble comes up out of the ocean. It has a, an island in it. And they're like, oh, my God, there's this island. And then seconds later, they land on an island. And we're like, did they just land on that island that nope. came up? Different island. Right. But yeah, how long but did it, it take you to figure that out? Um, There was a moment that I... did. Th- wait, did they get to the island that came up? From no. The no. They- they're not never till, not on- later. Not till later. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was I'm like, like they're second. never. <laughs> you, I was later, like, later Whoa. they are. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Later they do get there. Okay. Um. Remember, because they see yeah. it out the window of the helicopter. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. They're like, oh, that island. Like, yeah. wh- where? What island? Right over there. Thirty degrees left, and they're like, oh, and it's like, and they this don't land on that. <laughs> no. Late, later, yes. Not at that moment. No. no. The first oh. island. The first island they land on is just like the keys or something it's just oh yeah. wait yeah no i, I thought they were like, on the fucking island yeah the same no. here no no this, i sean okay. i agree i so missed this entirely <laughs> it's very possible that we are supposed to assume that that is miami beach wherever the atlanteans came to find the it, they they make note that it is an island it's okay not, so it's an yeah, island yes. so this is because when we arrive when our heroes arrive on this island there are dead people hanging from, uh, you know, mm. street signs. It looks and- like a post-apocalyptic, like, ta- like or, small town. Yeah, yeah, or Juarez, New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Either one. It's yeah. like, so something horrible has happened here, and, <laughs> you know, and it just happened. And so they Stuff's all... Stuff's still on fire. Yep. Well, eventually we go to fire town at night. We do, yes. Um, but before we get there, we have to, uh, everybody, you know, they have to explore the town. Like, what's going on? Right. Where's everybody at? Oh, my right. God, there's dead guys in sheets with blood yes. hanging and knocking against, uh, like, a oh, record. Yeah, ju- yes. Oh, yeah. the jukebox. That, that was a yeah. pretty cool scene, Yeah, actually. that was cool. You just hear the same, like, five seconds of a song. Like skipping Like, over skipping and, over and repeating over and over, and they go into what looks like an old-timey saloon. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a body wrapped in a sheet that's bloody hanging from the ceiling, and it just keeps bumping into this 
uh, jukebox as it yeah. swings back and which forth. Is, right, which is not a bad thing. Like, I might make a mental note of that yeah. or something, because that, that's pretty good. It's I like that. It's the morbid yeah. Fonz move. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It oh, worked. Fonz is dead. He still got it. In he still mouth. got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, was this where we had our first standoff? Uh, because then the the Warriors of Atlanta show up, right? Uh, mm-hmm. AKA the street gang punks. Although the 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 lead guy now with the crystal mask, right. uh, yes. and Morton Joe, as yeah. you said. Yes. <laughs> sits atop a vehicle with a big spike. Uh, it's the, like a 57 Chevy with big spikes on the yeah. side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, like, there's a lot of fi- uh, fins on all the cars and motorcycles. There's a lot of motorcycles in this as well. Uh, it's like, just like the wheel spikes in Greece. I was going to say, it's like it's yes. the same it's thing. Very much like yes. Yeah. It's the Scorpion's car in yep. Greece. Was this where they had the, um, the, like, Molotov cocktail? No, I think that was later. That was in Firetown, right? That was in yeah. Firetown, yes. Yeah, Here, there's a shootout. Yeah, they're like hiding in that weird saloon place, and then that like uh, priest that they had with them. Oh, they find a out. family in there too. Not yet. God damn it! Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you let me know when I could Sean's jump. Like <laughs> chronology doesn't matter. No. The priest comes Son out. Son of a bitch. The priest comes out to like confront them. He's like, they're human beings. They'll understand. And he's like, no, oh, more blood. Right. And the, then, the weird looking dude who looked like a corpse to begin with. Right. Yeah. That's okay. The one. Now I remember that guy. He looked kind of like my physical therapist at chiropractor. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Chuck. Hope you're listening. <laughs> hey, Kevin. <laughs> should Should we say also another thing that you know you uh, fans of Italian films will notice is this? Uh, and the next time we do one of these, damn it, <laughs> we have to find out who the, the the voice cast of Italian movies because it sounds like there's like six people, right? Right. I don't know who they are, Those but they like have a documentary. Comment. I know they have like next, these distinct voices, yes. and they're in every. They do every Italian movie right. of this period. Next time we do an Italian movie, we should have other people do the podcast and just say it's dubbed. Oh my God. <laughs> or or we do the podcast and then find people to redo everything we've said in it. In yeah, their yeah, own yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. Or, the, in their yeah, own yeah. words. Like we should, we should do a dub, dub version yeah. of the podcast. I love this idea. Oh, I, I love it too. I think we should totally oh do it. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, I love this. Yeah. It's a thing. I mean, you could probably make a game out of just, you know, in the movies, just oh, trying yeah. to figure out, like, oh, that guy was this character in that movie and this character in that movie and whatever. And we can't ever acknowledge that we did it. No. Oh, no. Oh, that's never. Be a thing. Yeah. 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 Never. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great us. idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. Love this. We gotta find doppelgangers or something. Dub dubbing artists. No, I think if the, we could get those people oh my God. to do it. Well, that yes. was my original idea. I was yeah. just like, well, let's get the the, the <laughs> six <laughs> Italian people. Alive. The Bizarro Freak Show. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're yeah. not Italian, but they well, do. Right, they yeah, do yeah. the English dubs. Um, okay. Well, anyway, our our crew survives this. It is weird that the guy is like, they're human beings. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, of course they're human. What the fuck are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. They're just punks. you can reason with them. Yeah. yeah. No more blood. They know something that we don't. Uh, Kathy's does. over there trying to. There's a special interest in Kathy. Yes, because she is the uh, in, uh, inter. I'm gonna say interpreter. Um, historian. Historian. Yeah, because she can decipher it. Do they need her? Oh, they need her to I was decipher. She's, she's probably what, like an anthropologist. Probably, but right? th- what they need her to bring them back. The Atlanteans. Well, this is revealed later. Yeah. Like they have to go through her. She's got to like open up portal with her something. This I, is a movie where there's one scene that basically explains what the fuck's going on, right? Where they yeah. stop the movie so somebody can tell you, like, yeah, we enter a white room and we stop the movie <laughs> and they're just like, yeah. here we are. Yeah, and until then you're just like, what? Yeah, huh? Which, if they're Atlanteans, why do they need her to translate their language? You're looking uh, at me? I don't know. Look at Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Just come out like bubbles. Because <laughs> they are Atlanteans, and it looks like they're still underwater when we enter this white room. Right. It, or it's raining wherever they are, because it's yeah. very streaky, and it can't really see it who looks the person like the is. devil's rain bubble. I kind of, yeah. I feel yeah. like we need to clarify. We keep saying Atlanteans, but we're only saying that because that's what the movie tells us. Right. There is nothing about these people that would signify them being right. Atlanteans. They are 80s street toughs. Yeah. 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 If Atlantis or Atlantean wasn't in the title, there's we would no, move the, with the no. connection would not be made. Nothing's underwater. There's nothing aquatic. There's nothing no. fantastical about it. It no, is ever. it is a, a post apocalyptic yeah. street tough These future. People would not blend in an Aquaman. No, yeah. not no. a trident in sight. Not even Waterworld. No. I know. And Waterworld is probably 
probably the closest comparison. I was yeah. going to say, they might fit in in Waterworld. No, no they, they, have, they don't have gills or any shit like that. Well, I mean, from afar, just their kind of get up a little bit. Everybody's outfits were made out of like nets and stuff in that movie. Actual water yeah, stuff. They were on, yeah, because uh, water. Yeah. In this, yeah, it's, it's all, it's, you know. Their yeah. motorcycles wouldn't go too far. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's closer to Mad Max than anything else. It's very weird. I mean, yeah, again, you know, uh, we've seen the movie and we saw that scene where they explained it to us. So that's why we're <laughs> able to impart this yes. wisdom to you. Um, they, so then they go to Firetown. I mean, we lose a couple people, right? At one point, there is like a, a pretty good moment when the bikers are riding into town mm-hmm. and they find our hero uh, group finds a, like a roll of uh, wire. Oh, yeah. Right. But before that, there's um, there's a few moments in this that like some stunts get really close to some of these acts. Yeah, oh my this God. is when they're in like the weird saloon place. At one point they go up to like almost like a bell tower, like a second floor or whatever it is. And one of the Atlanteans shoots like a fiery arrow yes. through the window. And as Michaela pointed out, like the actor clearly was not expecting it to come so close to yeah. him. Yeah. Cause he legitimately jumps and looks at it before he like realizes like, Oh, we're before still realizes, rolling. Yeah. That yeah. he's not dead yeah. or on fire. Right. Uh, and there's uh, several instances like this throughout. Many. Yeah. And, I would say. And, yeah. and close squibs. Like, yeah. Squibs yeah. are going off very close. To yeah. There's, close. yeah. These actors are in the line of fire. Yeah. There were, what do you call it? Like the mortar uh, mm. explosions. Oh, yeah. And yeah. The, I mean, it seemed like, you know, our heroes were standing. Yeah. On the almost when yeah. the things went off it was like jesus yeah happened a lot felt a little lackadaisical but yeah. it makes yeah. for a, a <laughs> an interesting action okay, scene but tony king didn't have anything to say about that stuff for I, all yeah, we know, know. yeah <laughs> didn't hear anything about like yeah that shit was blown up pretty close didn't hear anything like moments that. that it was like mumbled really low yeah because yeah. there was a lot of that true. but yeah at this point they leave the the saloon place and this is when we get the uh, the wire scene. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, and uh, yeah, it was one of those. They find like, like a spool of wire just sitting. What are you gonna do with that? You string it between two trees. Obviously, these guys on motorcycles Obviously. coming. Obviously. This mm-hmm. felt, uh, uh, as I said during the movie, this felt like a pivotal scene because we. Uh, I think Colin called it before. Somebody said beheading before we even got to that point. I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. This is where you find out if they go that far yeah. or they don't. And they did. <laughs> yeah. It was that guy. And his, his he, this guy on a motorcycle gets decapitated, but then he keeps, his body keeps driving. It's pretty yeah. good. And it's all wobbly and crazy. Yeah. It's like yeah. a chicken with a head, its head so cut sh- off, and it's hilarious. We didn't mention that um, the director name at the beginning says, what, like Richard Franklin or something? something oh, it does, yeah. Yeah. Sized, yeah. So, Sean and Michaela didn't know who no. we were dealing with. No. no. Right, yeah. No. <laughs> did not. No. But I wish, I wish that it would have been like a group of bikers being beheaded all yeah. at once. That would yeah. have been oh, that would have been cool. Would, they yeah, just went yeah. one after the other. Zoom, yeah. Zoom, zoom. Yeah. If they weren't all in a line across, but one after the other. Yep. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's, I mean, there's gore effects where, you know, people are getting, you know, squibs going off and they're all bloody. Of course, as yeah. the Italians are known to do, but there was a woman who got an arrow shot through her mouth. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Or a plastic head of her. Yes. yes. Yeah. An the way it wobbled after it took yeah. the shot. You were yeah. like, that's on a stool. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Mm-hmm. That was fun. I'm trying to think. They never get the eyes right. They're always just. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and but, uh, um, later on, when they go to the new location where they meet the family, which the mom is the one that gets the arrow through the mouth. Yes, the family. The daughter catches on fire. Yeah. Well, we, we meet this very this poor family, um, <laughs> a, a father, uh, a mother, and their daughter. Um, when we go to whatever the next place Firetown. is. Well, are we, we're in well, Firetown now. We say Firetown, but it's basically night falls and there's a block of the city that's on fire. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it is fire town, basically. Yeah. So this is where all the uh, Molotov cocktails and they've got shotguns at this point. They're defending themselves against it. They happen to run into a family of survivors who are also on this island mm-hmm. um, who slowly but surely just get offed one by one. Yeah. yeah. In the, like-, like you said, the daughter just gets lit on fire from a flamethrower <laughs> for one dude. Um, yeah. The wife gets the arrow through her mouth and then the father just gets blown away yeah. a little bit later. They don't last very long. No. Because we and, need yeah. victims to keep this movie going. You have yeah, right we do, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. But the, the guy with the flamethrower, I mean, you can improve a movie a lot by just having a guy with a flamethrower. He had a fucking flamethrower, <laughs> too. Yeah. We need to see, what was it, the executioner where the guy went around? I think there's two of those. He used a flamethrower. Anyway, <laughs> it's like a vigilante movie. Is on that no. vigilante kick. No. Oh no! Flamethrower. Um, 
Or he's an exterminator. Like, Sorry. Tarantino likes this movie. <laughs> I bet, right? Mm. Um, so anyway, during the scene, right, where they're they're fending off, they're defending the Alamo, right? Basically. And, uh, yeah, it did look like the Alamo. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is the assault on Precinct 13 or Night of the Living Dead yeah. section yeah. of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kathy gets abducted because yes. the the sneaky uh, uh, the punks come in the back sneaky punks. and well I was gonna say Atlanteans but I'm like no 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 they're punks they're punks mm-hmm. come in the back and take her and Mike's like we can't like leave her so he and Muhammad go out and try to get her on bikes Mike's like take it off Muhammad's like I don't know how to drive a bike he's like well just run we should go in separate directions though and so they split up to go looking for Kathy. <laughs> Solid plan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. And he drives his motorcycle. I remember him getting off the motorcycle. I remember commenting on how I like the motorcycle. I don't remember what happens next. Yeah. yeah I remember I they're in the f- woods because at some point, like these movies, generally, there's a lot of you know when you shoot a movie in the in the woods, you know, in yeah. the jungle or wherever the hell, uh, the forest. Let's say in this case. <laughs> Wait, uh, is this? Is this where they take the bus, or is this where? They oh, there's a bus or part. Is this where they got on the helicopter? I think we. I totally bus. forgot about the bus chase. Yeah, me too. The bus and helicopter I think chase. We've passed the bus, but we should go back to the bus. All right, we're going back to the bus. <laughs> get back uh, on the bus. They get on a bus. Yeah. And they uh, there's a whole helicopter thing, which is you know pretty fun because pretty what, solid. Scene. It's, it's a cool solid stunt because yeah. they're getting away in a bus, but they're also they're being chased by a helicopter, and so like. Uh, video games of yore. There's bad guys jumping out onto the bus yeah. to try and attack the payment. From, from the helicopter, from the helicopter. Yeah, the yeah. helicopter's getting within what a few feet for it's them like, to yeah, jump it's like ten, ten feet, and people yeah. are jumping it's on like helicopters. It's, it's skid could almost touch Safety. the roof of that bus. Yeah, <laughs> no, the no. film industry they don't have. But it, can you imagine the timing that that would require to like shoot this scene? Because you have to have the bus going at the right speed to match up you with the long helicopter. Highway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised at yeah, this Yeah, I'm surprised they, they pulled pull it off. This, off. Well, this is courtesy of, what was it, the Rock uh, stunt team or something yeah, like that. There was a credit credit. The Rock stunt, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of stunt works. Guys falling off of cliffs. cliffs and, yeah. You know, I mean, like doing actual stunts. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them shot well, some of them not. But, I mean, mm. at least they're out there doing it. Yes. Right. Um, you got to run barricades. Things explode. Cause that was the one where I was like, oh, it didn't take much to get through that. And a second later, like, right. Then he, like, ah, yeah. there's yeah, what I was like, for. you spoke too soon. Colin. The explosions are there. Eventually it is discovered oh. by the scientific, uh, uh, portion of our group mm-hmm. that raising this, uh, submarine indeed did cause Atlantis to raise from the ocean floor and this caused the Atlantean interceptors to come out. Well, I think uh, uh, Crystal Skullhead at some point says something to that effect, right? Like, we're very territorial. In we'll fair, kill yeah, everybody. In, yeah, That's in why Firetown. we're invading you. And in Firetown, like, well, he drives through and gives his speech. Mm-hmm. We're taking back our territory. Which is the most we get from a bad guy in this movie. I think so. I think yeah. that's the biggest reveal of anything, yeah. and that's it. Because uh, I think did did uh, George Hilton figure this stuff? He's the professor. Did he figure this out based on the um, discoveries that Kathy had made? Whatever on yeah, the, the tablet. Cause, yes, yes. Cause Kathy before she was kidnapped had been like working on the translations of the tablet. Yes. And she and he was looking at her notes. Okay, yes. so they got it all figured out, and we're like, "Oh, that's what's going on." Oh, of course. Obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, obviously. So now we got to go get Kathy back. And in order to do that, because I mean, the cast is being decimated here on this island, True. Uh, they're like, we're going to, there's a helicopter at the other end of the island. Yep. It's like an old Huey on a dock <laughs> somewhere. We're going to take that and we're going to go fly to. Then they go to the island. Then they go Atlantis. to Atlantis. This is the. Yeah. Right. Now we go to Atlantis. Atlantis. Yeah. Because okay. the bubble is down and they can go there because. Yes. At some <laughs> yeah, the point, bubble came down. They're flying in the helicopter and going like, well, we have to find that island. Where, if you were an island, where would you be? Uh, he asks Muhammad, yeah. <laughs> and Muhammad, and Muhammad points the opposite direction of the island they've already seen. They've all seen the <laughs> island. They know where it is. And they still ask him the question if you were an island, where would you be? He's like, I'd be over there. Muhammad's and, always 180 degrees off. Yeah. And then he gives an example of uh, one time in probably Budapest where they were doing circles and shit. Yeah. It's, they escaped from a prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, they are the A team. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? It's, we're just thrown into this, like, uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, so they end up going to 
Atlantis. Yes. A forested island, yes. which is <laughs> heavily s- forested island in the middle of the ocean. And their submarine has washed up on the shore of Atlantis. Which is weird, yeah. but okay. The yes. one they raised is just there. <laughs> and so... And they're, I, it's a magnet. They're attracted to each other. Yeah. Okay, because Again, this is the, lost. The nuclear um, uh, radiation yeah. coming from the warheads on board right. is somehow triggering all this. So uh, the professor mm. is like, I'm going to get on board and I'm going right. to disarm the warheads. Yes, that's what you have shouldn't to do. This, shouldn't this have spocked him? Yeah. Or something. I would have thought, right? Or he'd come out with burns or something no, like just, that. No, we see him crawling through hatches and then he eventually pops up and he's like, ha I disarmed the warheads. And yeah. we're like, did that have any kind of significance on anything? Did that trigger the dome to I think start that triggers again? the dome. I think that slowly but surely that will make the island go back down. Yes. Okay. It makes as much sense as everything else in this movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm going with it. In trying to find Kathy, there's a fight, of course, as you have to have it between oh, yeah. our hero and... Uh, Mike and uh, the Crystal Skull dude. They do get a fight in a cave on the way to the core of Atlantis. Yep. And sure. after we'll smashing the guy's skull, which apparently kills him by embedding pieces of the skull in his waxed face. Yeah, right. we got another wax face thing, which is... Oh, like it's a, fun. It, I mean, I like oh, it. It's like, fun. It's just okay by me. <laughs> right. It's It felt like an odd that they would go that far for it, but oh, oh okay. But Breaking that glass does, as you said before, opens the door to the the secret chambers of Atlantis. And so they go in there, and this is where the movie does kind of steal from Raiders of the Lost Ark. They have uh, traps (laughs) that they have to get through because there's, first of all, I think there's a glowing eyed Mm -hmm. idol in the middle of a room shooting goofy 1980s it or feels, very Italian lasers. Yeah. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, it feels uh-huh. like they go to an, into an Egyptian crypt and there's just this little statue with red eyes. It's Olmec at this point. And it, it just, is Olmec. It, it yeah. feels like Olmec. Right. And it's just shooting lasers. And yeah. It's just, but like, where have we gone? Yeah. Like, where, where did we get to? That <laughs> This is where we're at. So, but he's trying to duck and get through and all that stuff. And Muhammad comes in and saves his ass and everything. And then they shoot it and there's technology below the stone and everything. It's right. very, it's a very weird we combo. End up in a weird... Turbine hallway? Oh, yeah, the turbine hallway. Fizzy lifting drinks. Yeah. They, I'm, I'm not sure what was going on there. They fight. No, I don't know either. No, I don't either because no it's does. possible yeah. they were supposed to be being sucked toward well, the I fan. Well, I think that's what they were trying for, but it wasn't really. It's good. basically playing like these guys keep throwing themselves against walls and get closer to the fan. You're yeah. like, I'm not, I'm not, you're not selling this. Right. right. I think, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> it feels like you guys are pushing the wrong way. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they keep going towards the fan, and <laughs> at a certain point, Muhammad's just holding the one guy back because he's very strong, apparently. Yeah, and then they just shoot it. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's how they solve a lot of problems. Yeah, that is a lot of that just, problem solving is just shoot just it, just shoot it, and it yeah. works. So why give up now? And so they shoot the fan. Which does that open a side door? Yes. Yeah. Okay. To the and, secret and room. And there's Kathy. <laughs> and there's Kathy. Hanging Although out. Kathy at this point has uh, a new hairdo she, and makeup yeah. job and looks futuristic. She right. does she in looks, this futuristic room. She looks like a futuristic geisha. Yeah. 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 And this is the 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 room with the actual Atlanteans who are. On screens. Yeah, who are drowning. Yeah, so there's a very, like, Zardoz thing going on here. Yeah, yeah. Or something. yes. It feels but, Superman-ish. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 Very yeah. Superman-ish. Because yeah. there's crystals yeah. that have to be manipulated yes. in order yeah, to make yeah, this Yeah, the stuff Atlanteans happen. are stuck in the uh, negative zone or whatever. Yeah, the Phantom the Zone. The Phantom Zone, uh, yeah. Yeah, and because at some point they're asking Kathy to, um, like, uh, interpret these symbols that are flashing on the screen. It's basically a bunch of guys... In this like wavy looking screen room, yeah. going oh, oh, um, you don't hear them, but that's no. what their mouths are doing. It's hilarious. Uh, They're like fish. Like- yeah, so these are the, <laughs> the true Atlanteans. Yeah, so these are what not I, the interceptors. What I, I feel like the interceptors are the religious group who worships the Atlanteans and have been trying for many years to bring back Atlantis. I like this. this and so they sense. are the soldiers of the Atlanteans. Yeah. I don't know if the Atlanteans are uh, peaceful people. And I don't know if these punks fight on their behalf if they want them to or not. I'm thinking so out many loud questions right now. <laughs> unanswered by this So movie. many yeah. unanswered yeah. because we don't get true. to talk to a real Atlantean. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Unless you count Kathy who vanishes and uh, <laughs> appears on what all she the say? screens. The, the, what is she saying? Is she leaving the She's like, help me, Mike. I remember the help me, Mike. Help me, Mike. And she uh, says one other thing. Come Something. find me? Yeah. The, the, me? Dome the dome is closing. The dome is closing. That's it. Yes. That was it. The dome is closing. 
Even though now we're like, is she an Atlantean? Did she she get absorbed? Right, because Mike convinced her to turn them off, basically. Because she's at the switches, the crystal switches, to turn things off. You have to fight it. Yeah, and so he yells at her a little bit, and then she turns it off, and the Atlanteans go away. But she herself gets sucked into. She disappears. Yeah, but she had that blank stare of the 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 brainwashed yes. cult member basically oh, yes. mm-hmm. and she was at that little pulpit thing so we're like oh she's gone over to their side because mm-hmm. people do seem to go over to the atlantean side yeah. uh michaela suave goes over and open fires on them yeah. uh, miguel at some point like he opens fire on them even though we think he's a friend i think that's why we were like the german is clearly like uh gonna be one of these people oh uh, yeah um, so they can like bring people over that all those people are always were Atlantean interceptors. I don't know. Sure. All good questions. Yeah, yeah. Very. That's a lot of good questions. We'll have to write a letter to someone. I don't know who, cause we'd be the ones. That write That's right. Yeah. R- Ruggiero. Ruggiero yeah, he's is he alive? alive? Yeah, okay. he is alive. Yeah, he was doing conventions recently. Yeah, because oh, yeah, mm-hmm. he directed Cannibal Holocaust. Yep. The guy's very famous. true. Very he was true. at a at a uh, convention here a few years ago. I, I saw him there. Yeah, he's all over the place. Yep, still making that sweet, sweet Cannibal Holocaust still, money. Yep, mm. still threatening a sequel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Still yeah. threatening that sequel. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Um. I know this is probably the most we're going to get to talk about the makers of Cannibal Holocaust. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> no, one, no one wants to bring that movie. Um. So Mike and Mohammed split. They're like, okay, we yeah. got to get out of here because the dome is closing. Get to the chopper. There's a Basically, get to the yes. chopper moment. Yeah. Uh, they get in the chopper. And who's in the chopper? Kathy, apparently. Yeah. Although not done up like an Atlantean. No, she's normal again. But she's still, yeah. well, she's still kind of spacey. She's spacey, but she's like dressed normal. Her hair is normal. Like she's yeah, it's like maybe normal. she's coming out of it. Is that what you got? Because I'm like, oh, shit. She does start making like, out with Mike. I thought yeah. she was like still possessed and yeah. something was no, I figured because she was changed that she was fine. Really? I mean. Like with that blank stare, I was yeah. like, okay, well, something's still up. She remembered yeah. the spinach date joke, so there's, right. she's in there oh, somewhere. That was key. No, at that point, when she like comes up and like kisses him and is like, still take me to the date, I'm like, oh, well, okay, she's not possessed. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. I'm very hard to read. <laughs> yeah. And like a I mean, lot of clear. Yes. I, I am not sure. I mean, obviously, we were talking about a spinach date early on <laughs> in the movie when they first met that, you know, the playful flirting on the yacht. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's how I flirt. Talking I, about spinach dates. I did not get the the chemistry between these two for the entire movie. <laughs> no. I, like it totally missed me until the end, where it was like, yeah. "Oh, are they supposed to?" Because she's in love with with hieroglyphics, or she's in love with uh, uh, determining what that tablet says. Right. Like she, science is her mistress. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And she's pretty dedicated to it. And uh, <laughs> and the bubble, they escape the bubble. Yeah, it's the, very very they, tense. The yep. dome is closing, and they make it out. They fly straight up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After they um, talk themselves up through the bubble, because that's it. It's the power of <laughs> they will themselves up through the bubble, basically. Yes. Yeah. Because that's yeah. We don't see them run. <laughs> it's. I mean, it, I wonder how much this movie costs. It's cheap. We don't see a. <laughs> we, we don't see a helicopter rising out of a dome. We see a lot of. Let's do it. Let's do it. A lot of close-ups of the actors but just. We, yeah. But throughout the rest of the movie, we do get a lot of extended helicopter landing scenes. Yeah. Like, there is a lot. Several. They got their money's worth out of the helicopter they rentals. Sure I think. Yeah. They definitely did between the stunts and everything else they had to do with it. Oh wait, yes. this was filmed in the Philippines, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Because right there's a story. Apocalypse Now was filmed there, and the Philippine government like basically turned over its fleet of Hueys, right? Oh, uh, jeez. Uh, you know, for them to use. It was just like, well, if we have like, to go oh. fight the rebels, we gotta take the, the, the helicopters back. Like, Doesn't matter if you're shooting or not. <laughs> Jesus. You know? like, let's cash in on that sweet helicopter access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go to the Philippines. You can use it, their helicopters. Um, and that's the end of the movie. We got that's a freeze it. frame and we're like, okay, so uh, you know, I don't know she's uh, she's yeah, no- normal ish. They're gonna go on their date. And Muhammad and Mike are Muhammad's out awkward of, because out they're of making there. out in front of him. Like that's it. Yeah, yep. but they can go back on their uh, soldier of fortune uh, hunting uh, side bi- or business business. Yeah, in the sequel. Oh no, Raiders of Atlantis two. Anything Raiders Raiders from Atlantis. No. Warriors of Atlantis. Uh uh-uh. uh. Return to Atlantis. Atl- return to Atlantis. <laughs> I got nothing. Okay. Go ahead and write it, Colin. Yeah. It's on you. Yeah, it's on you and only you, buddy. <laughs> Ruggiero, if you're out there, 
There you go. That's how you. That, yeah. That's how you get him in our. <laughs> okay. If we, get, if we get Ruggiero, I'm in. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of the movie. But you're wondering how. Did we like it? Did we not like it? Would we recommend that you watch it? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned and find out. Because, first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder if he's originally from Atlantis. That would make sense. Parts of him are. Yeah. <laughs> Part, that's parts. Of, I guarantee that's that. always the answer. Parts, parts of them. Yes. That's true. Parts of them are. We'll 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 have to put a map up and put pins in where each piece of them comes. Maybe from he's at some maybe point. he's looking for his crystal skull. Maybe. Do you think he's missing anything that he's got like a lifelong journey to find? I think he's yeah. a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, <laughs> but. Some things are private. <laughs> anyway, Go ahead, Colin. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I uh, tell you what. Thank if you, you If you have Sorry. any theories or if there's anything you'd like to, to know. No, if you want to write in and uh, you can uh, find us on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can even get a hold of us through Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About. What if, what if we had like a Dear Igor? Dear Igor. Yeah. What do people ask for life advice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you, you know what, want dude, advice, you know what? I write listen. In. I listen to a lot of advice podcasts just because I like to hear about drama in other people's yes. lives. And some of the stuff, I don't even care if it's fake because it, it's entertaining as fuck. Yeah. So you know, I'd be all for that just to hear some. I dirt. would too. If you've got any questions for Igor, a dear yeah. Igor segment, yeah, send them our way. There you yeah. go. We'll just read it at the end of the mailbag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dear, I mean. dear Igor, Igor, Igor. That'll be Igor. I don't know. Okay. That's his, his name like educated persona. Yeah, educated it's interchangeable one. to me. Yeah. Does well, he? Well, his, his, what you call his educated persona? His educated persona. That's his advice. Dear persona. Igor. Doctor Igor. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna see. Yeah. We're gonna see if somebody makes yeah. this happen. Igor, where'd you get that pipe and ascot from? Yeah. Jesus. He, he's got a nice smoking jacket. All of a mm-hmm. sudden, down yeah. too. Well, about tonight's movie, Raiders of Atlantis. What? Someone saw this? <laughs> no. Well, let's find out. Okay. Asobi Datura writes no. in and says, another bad movie set in 1994. You know it. And he says, great opening the- opening credits theme song. And you betcha it was written and performed by the same dudes who did the Yours World song. Oh, yes. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Well, Yours I thought that. Well, now we have his playlist dedicated to these people. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the something Inferno they were credited as. Oh, right? Black, Black Inferno? Inferno? Black okay. Inferno like in this that. one. Yeah. It was like the song Black Inferno yeah. performed yeah. by Black yeah. Inferno. Wow. Which consists of two dudes. But yeah, there were parts of it because I remember like, world. like your. Mm-hmm. It was like, what the hell are they saying? And right. you need like the subtitles. Yeah. And Sophie's my internet friend. I met through a Facebook group through another podcast. So oh, nice. what up? Thanks for writing. <laughs> I love and that. Thank you for that little bit of information. Yeah. Yay. I love it. Uh, Michael, Welcome to the family. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Michael Whitaker says an Italian sci-fi movie from the 80s? Well, then you know it's a quality product. Mm, but this yeah. one, but it's 1994, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not um, quite as magical. Yeah. A lot more grungy than we would have thought. <laughs> wait until you see 1990 Bronx Warriors. Mm. I can't wait. Okay. Mm. Uh, or ni- what, 2072, the new, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the the new, new gladiators. gladiators. Uh... Two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Stone Cold. Owen Johnson oh, did. Uh, wrote in and said, I've never heard of this gem. The only movie that I knew Lance Henriksen as a biker was Savage Dawn from 1985. Hmm. And William Forsyth is the bad guy. And Lance Henriksen is the good guy. How ironic. Well, now we got to watch this What's movie to complete the extended universe. I think so. Savage Dawn. Okay. So I the roles were reversed. I didn't realize Lance Henriksen played a biker more than once. I mean, it makes sense, there you but... Go. Savage Dawn. Savage yeah. Dawn. 1985. Uh, Chuck Oblivion says, I, <laughs> I remember seeing this at the video store in the early 90s, but I couldn't hire it out because I was only nine, and in Australia, it was rated R18+. plus. But they let a nine-year-old kid here hire uh, M15 plus films, but R18 plus was a no-no for some reason. But I was 10, and they let me hire Re- Meet the Feebles. 
Oh, oh, well, that's not okay. <laughs> not okay. You say you were only nine, but as we discussed last, or when we watched that movie, that seems to be the perfect age in which most people watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, watch Stone exactly. Cold. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says, Hi, Chains Dom. Cooper scared the hell out of me. Evil as fucking when he shoved that gang member's fingers into the wheel. It turned my stomach. They should have turned the boss's character up more, and it sucks he never became a cult B-movie star. He was made for it. 3.5 knockoff shocking dark VHS covers out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, w I wish there was more Boz content, you know? Like, Do we? More Boz action movies. Yeah, you watched that movie, right? It was a good time. He was something. It was a good time. Yeah. Oh, Moving Chuck on. Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris got how many fucking movies? We can't give Boz a few more. I mean, he's got if, way if more personality. Were, okay, than if they Chuck were Norris. up to like snuff of Stone Cold, and I think they gave him opportunities, I right? But he didn't. There's at least one, one on uh, another one. But yeah. well, I'm gonna check it out. I mean, we should look that yeah. up. Maybe uh, Nick Siebel said honestly, this is an underrated '90s action yes. film. The Boz actually deserves more credit than he gets, and he should have been featured in more movies. So I'm saying, but with only bringing in nine million at the box office, it's hard to justify. And uh, how'd y'all like that opening scene? It had Cobra vibes. It, it oh, was. It definitely, did. it was uh, amazing. Yeah, that movie is very fun. Uh, we said on that episode that uh, the director Craig Baxley also yes. directed Action Jackson. Well, Action Dude oh. says Welcome. I enjoyed Action Jackson too. Carl Weathers is an underrated as an actor. His role yes. as Chubbs and Happy Gilmore is so nuanced <laughs> under the weight of Adam Sandler's hot-tempered Gilmore. I never thought I'd be breaking down the performances of Happy Gilmore, but alas, here we are. I mean, yeah, the freak show will take huh? you places yes. you never expected. I like Happy Gilmore. Chubbs, yeah. you took his hand. <laughs> uh, Crypticus calls Stone Cold a Stone Cold masterpiece. I agree. It, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill Hainer said I'd watch this, but I'm still doing the BIM. Woo, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say you're gonna get worn out. It's only for an hour, it's right? BIM I hour. thought so. Yeah, unless, hour, unless we got stuck on. Did we get stuck in BIM? Does daylight savings time apply to BIM? Oh man. BIM hour. Extra like, hour of BIM. Yeah. You're gonna have to listen to the Apple episode to know what the hell yes, we're talking about right now. About. Well, yeah, I don't know if that'll help. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's still gonna be unclear. But. <laughs> and now a science report from <laughs> science <laughs> correspondent <laughs> Brett Williams. <laughs> so in Stone Cold, what we called the Komodo dragon was ah. actually an Asian water monitor, which is native to India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and all through Southeast Asia. There was another graduate student in my office who kept one in an enclosure in the corner. They're pretty docile pets, considering that they're the second largest lizard species. And yeah. yes, Colin, Sonny Crockett had an alligator named Elvis on his boat for the first two seasons of very few early episodes in the third season of Miami Vice. Nice. nice. All right, you were you were correct. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for writing Thanks. in. Yeah, thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you for letting us know Love about it. monitor lizards. Yep, yeah. and yours world themes. Yours oh, world. Yeah. I sing it as Wayne's world. That's yeah. how it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fitting. It works. Yeah. That's your hunter from the future. Yeah. Yes, he's, your, the yeah. He's, yeah, the he's the man. He is the man. I was gonna say, there's lyrics to this somewhere. Yeah. I don't yours remember. World. Them. He's the man. Yeah, there's check a, that out. There's a yeah. lyric video on YouTube. I remember. Oh, like, we could do it for good. karaoke then. Yeah, and can. if you love Red Brown. We have another movie we can recommend for you. <laughs> He's hitting every convention except the ones around here. Come uh, on, Red Brown. Yeah, he went, We're your, uh, we got to be your biggest fans yeah. at this point. <laughs> what was it? He was yeah, Night Claws, right? Night Claws, yeah. Night, night Beast. Claws. Yeah, I was going to say Night, night one of them. He was a Night Claws. Oh, oh yeah, because Frank, Stal Frank Stallone showed up yeah. at the end yeah, of Night yeah, Claws, yeah. right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Well, wait, yes. What was the Italian night? Night, um, beat. night killer. Night killer. Night killer. Yeah. Right, that was yeah. Yeah. Night killer was night good. Night beast was good. Night claws not so much. Night right. killer was fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> night killer. Night beast. Both good. The KFC. Yep. I remember the KFC. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. My yes. night trilogy. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Well, thank you for sticking with us. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought up uh, Raiders of Atlantis. Michaela. Starting with. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Come on. <laughs> go. <laughs> uh, it. It's ridiculous and it's dumb, but it's not ridiculous and dumb enough to be worth watching. I don't think it's it's just a lot of long scenes of like shooting at a each other and scenes. running around without understanding what's happening or why. And mm -hmm. the Atlantis is a lie. And <laughs> it's like it could like the fucking cockroach from the nest. It's a lie. It's not crazy enough. Like yeah. it, if it reached Miami Connection or, you know, hard to get to Hawaii levels of crazy, then yeah. But it just like 
it feels like it's made up as they're going along or something or the i don't i don't know there's no there's no explanation that can justify this i don't think <laughs> um i mean the commentary track might have been the most entertaining thing about it the half commentary we heard <laughs> yeah do we recommend watching yeah. it with the half commentary is that the more interesting I, I, way to it see it it might be but uh, there might be a good like mystery science theater version of this movie out here but i would not watch it on its own so mm-hmm. that's a pass sean what do you think um yeah I- i'm gonna pass on it too it's got it's got some interesting elements to it like i said this got some stuff that surprised me that i did not expect from this movie helicopter stunts and whatnot um but it is it's just a long uh it's a really long shootout with some mm-hmm. mad max stuff thrown in um i mean if i had if we hadn't seen all that stuff this might be a little more interesting but I mean, there's the Atlanteans is a lie. Maybe mm-hmm. we could have done more with that. Again, maybe budget cut them off from getting more into that room with all the drowning Atlantean people. Um, yeah, it's not out there enough. It's not. It's not probably not memorable enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to remember it for the wrong reasons because <laughs> we had a commentary running through most of it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it needed to do more. Mm-hmm. And I mean, for the freak show, I mean, we're coming off like we're coming off Stone Cold. Like I this movie's nothing compared to that, and it's not <laughs> inept enough to be a car wreck to watch. So no, I no, I'm gonna pass on the whatever this title of this movie yep, is, uh, Atlantis Interceptors. I'm gonna yeah, say no. I like that one, yeah. Colin. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat. Where I I, I can't tell. It's like maybe we're spoiled. You know that we've we seen might be all these but other also, movies. You know they're bad, but they're like so bad they're good. And then, like this could be a good party movie, maybe. But, like we from. were watching it, and there's some chuckles and all that. But yeah. like we've seen all this other stuff now, where it's mm-hmm. like, and eh, now the bar has been set pretty high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and this one's not cutting it. Would it for you? You know, I don't know that I'd say watch it alone. I mean. I no. sat there uh, trying actively during the movie to, to t- keep track of what the fuck was going on. And yeah. I couldn't really. And we had to talk about it afterwards to try yeah. and puzzle out like mm-hmm. what actually was happening. Yeah, and for as much brain power as we have to put in to do that, uh, we, I don't think we got enough right. out of it right. to That's, justify it. I, uh, yeah. That might be the equation. Yeah, I think we, I we think put, so. We put in too much effort in, and it, did, it was not yeah, worth the return it. was not good. No, I think like you said, it's basically it's an action movie which consists of basically people running into a building and shooting and, you know, and then, you know, it's stunt teams f- falling off yes. of other buildings or blowing up or jumping or whatever. Mm-hmm. Move to a new location and repeat. Right. Kill those over people. And over and over and over again. Yeah, and kill those people. Yeah. Uh, you know, character work be damned. I thought it yeah. was cool to see people that I recognized from other movies. I mean, George Hilton, I haven't seen as goofy as the professor role. It was pretty goofy. Uh, Ivan Rasimov, I didn't know had brown eyes because he always has these creepy <laughs> blue eyes in the movies that I've seen. Um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say you can pass on uh, Raiders from Atlantis. Holly, mm-hmm. what'd you think? Yeah, no, I think this is going to be a, a universal freak show pass. Um, why did you bring this? Like, what what did you yeah. see? So, uh, looking for a movie, I went down a rabbit hole and I came across this one. I saw that um, it it was like you know you see those like customers who watch this also. Oh watch. yeah, be recommended. Yes, it was recommending like Miami Connection and Hard Ticket to Hawaii, like stuff that we've watched that we've fucking loved, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so they that, decided to sneak this one in there right. on that list. So that, in conjunction with, um, I read some reviews where people were explaining just how bananas it was, and it was just like a fun, like action cheesy B movie. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this sounds perfect. And then I watched the trailer, and I was like, sold. Mm-hmm. Do not believe the trailer. <laughs> oh. Do not believe the trailer. And then I saw it was the director of Cannibal Holocaust, and I was like, well, we have to watch it. Right, this. at least we have right, something to talk right. about with it in that regard. Yeah, I was like, so all those stacked up, I was like, even if it's bad, I can't not pick it based on that, you know? Like, I had to bring it. Too far so, down that path? Mm-hmm. I mean... We've all, we've all been there. Yes. Yeah. We've all been Just got to get it out of your yes. system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 the selling point was when I saw who was directed by, and I was like, well, this has to be ridiculous if based on all that I've read about it, um, which there's not much else to read. I will tell you that. There's like no information about <laughs> uh. this movie. I couldn't find the budget. I couldn't find anything about it. Um, but yeah, I can't recommend it. There are some scenes that are fun. Like we say, you know, the arrow through the oh, mouth yeah. with the fake head. 
the decapitation with the wire. Like, there's some fun stuff, but it's just so few and far between. Mm. There's way too long of like gunfight chase scenes. Yeah. It, it takes, and, it takes and, helicopters so goddamn long to land in this movie. And yeah. to not really have a good bad guy. Like yeah, a main there's bad not a great guy. villain. No. Like, it's, yeah, it right. just does, it's just not up to snuff for me. So I'm going to have to pass, unfortunately. I thought this was going to be a fun one, and I was deceived. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. But I regret nothing. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, uh, as a palate cleanser, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. The cannon train moves on. Oh, Summer of Cannon rolls Summer of Cannon. Along. Yes. What are we watching? Uh, we are going to watch something I hope we will enjoy. Um, we're going to spend some time with JCVD in Cyborg. Oh, you know, I was actually like, if she doesn't pick it, I'm going to pick Cyborg. I'll just throw yeah, it in there. I was going to say, because I've been bugging Colin about yeah. this one for like five years. It's like, you keep bringing it up, Colin. Let's yeah. watch Cyborg. All right, I'm it's down. Right. Okay, well, it's, it's been a while time. since uh, yeah. Yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme has made an appearance on the Saturday Night Freak Show. So, I feel good about this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Next week, we're watching Cyborg. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>